Thank you so much for joining us for our coffee conversations this morning. Um, you're with Forge Breast Cancer Survivor Center. We have Megan LaRussa Chenoweth. Am I saying that right? Um, and so we're so excited to have you here. Um, this is a topic, and, and we just talked about this a little bit, but we've never really touched on it, um, but it's so relevant in the breast cancer journey. I mean, a woman's journey in general, right? Um, and so really excited to kind of talk about what is it like to now you have this new body that you have to identify with or that you have to dress every day? Um, what, how do we get through these types of things? But before we get into the topic, tell us about you, the work that you do, how you got connected to Forge and all of the things. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to be with all you wonderful ladies today. Um, uh, so I grew up here in Birmingham, uh, where Forge is based, and um, I've always loved fashion. Um, after college, I moved to New York and worked up there in the fashion industry as a trend forecaster, and it was a really amazing experience, and I did graduate school at Parsons School of Design, and fashion has just always been my passion as a form of self-expression and uh, you know, a form of art for me, and when I was working in New York, I loved my experience, but what I really missed and and really wanted more of was fashion um in a more personal setting versus just I was working you know in the mass industry and so I moved back to Birmingham and I started my own business and I started doing personal styling for women and I also was doing um styling for photo shoots and for fashion shows and for advertising campaigns. And that was very fun and great experience. But ultimately I realized I really loved the personal styling piece because I really love helping real women with their real wardrobes for their real lives. And fashion can feel very daunting and, and frustrating, especially I think post COVID it's gotten even more frustrating just shopping. Mm -hmm. And then you throw into in something like breast cancer and it just makes shopping that much harder. So I love working one-on-one um, -on -one with my clients to help them, you know, figure out their body type, clean out their closets, shop, make outfits, all that kind of good stuff. So, so yeah. And, and I got connected with Forge because um, one of your team members, Meg, um, love it. She, uh, her little boy and my little boy are best friends at school. And so it's been really fun getting to, to know her sweet family. Well, I'm just so glad. Um, I wish that every woman, you know, had a uh, stylist, like it was mandated as a woman, a gifted a stylist or something. <laughs> you know, just life transitions can make it hard as you kind of change and you're just like, but that's not who I am anymore. So how do I dress yeah. this way? And that's just for the regular woman, right? Yeah. And the woman without breast cancer, all, you know, we, we're very self-conscious yeah. about how we look. Right. Um, and the things. And so when we think about breast cancer, that's something completely different because, yeah part of our femininity, femininity is affected, whether it's our hair, our skin, and also the breast, right? Yes. And so, um, for women who have experienced breast cancer, it might have things like radiation affect their skin, mm -hmm. so they can't wear certain things anymore. Um, sure. It's kind of important to address this because yeah. I mean, you don't want to just go out in a t-shirt and all mm -hmm. of the things that you, you don't, that, that doesn't allow you to feel beautiful and all of the things that you felt prior to. Yeah. Um, so what are some important factors that you would like for breast cancer patients or mm -hmm. survivors to know um, yeah. prior to beginning the process of like, I need to re-identify with how I dress myself every day. Like, what's the first thing that you always want them to think of when they're about to tackle something like this? Yeah, it can feel really overwhelming. And, and I see this for clients. I've worked with several clients who have either before they knew me or while we we're working together have, have, have dealt with breast cancer. And so I've definitely have worked with a lot of women in that stage, but but for every woman, I think when you enter any type of life stage, it can be very easy to hit a style rut. And a style rut, you know you've hit a style rut when you go into your closet and you're like, I have nothing to wear. But yet, the, you know, the old, you know, old tale of I have a closet full of clothes, but nothing to wear. I think that's when you know you've really hit a style rut. And that's my big thing is, I mean, I've worked with some of my clients for 10 plus years. And the reason why we keep working together is because they're evolving and changing, whether it be their work, their family life, health, you know, reasons, they're evolving because as women, we're always evolving, right? And so our clothes should be evolving with us. And that can feel very, again, overwhelming and frustrating. Those are the words I hear a lot from clients when they first come to me. 
because it's like, where do I start? And so you bring up a really valid point of like, where do I even begin to figure out my wardrobe? And of course, like we said, throwing in breast cancer throws in a whole nother level, which we'll dive into. But I think in general, the first thing you have to do when you're reassessing kind of your wardrobe is figuring out what what do I like now? What, what do I even really visually, what visually speaks to me? Because think about everyone here today, think about where you were 10 years ago and what were you wearing? It was probably a little different than what you're wearing now, right? And you were a different life stage and all that kind of good stuff. So you want to remove any of those things that are just not serving you anymore because visual clutter in your closet, even if it's organized clutter, creates mental clutter and mental clutter makes us really struggle when we're making an outfit or getting dressed in the morning. And so it's, it's really been proven. I see it with clients all the time. They're like, I'm not going to have less in my closet, but more to wear because you can see more what you have. It's not so visually, especially when you're going through something like breast cancer, like you're probably already very overstimulated and exhausted and all the things you don't need your wardrobe being one more thing that's frustrating you. So I think getting clear on like the stage of life you're in, what do I really like right now? So how do you figure that out? A lot of times I utilize Pinterest for my clients, like make a Pinterest board. What, what, what are you liking? Um, or if you prefer something like an Instagram, what are you seeing on Instagram that you like? Is it a certain, what I typically see with my clients is like, they might all kind of like a very classic look with a lot of neutrals, or maybe they love colorful, floral prints, or maybe they're like, oh, I'm a little bit more bohemian than I thought. Mm -hmm. So I think having the Pinterest board outlet is really, really helpful to visually see, because fashion's visual, right? Visually see what you're liking and then get into your closet, get into your closet and do a good cleanse and utilize your, your Pinterest board to help guide you if you want Clean out your closet can, again, I keep using the words like overwhelming and daunting because, because it just is. Yeah. And, and for some of my clients, they love getting rid of things. Other clients have a really hard time with it because they know what they spend on things or the emotional connect, you know, connection. And so chunk it down. You don't have to clean out your whole closet at once. That can feel like just too much and you get decision fatigue, right? Mm -hmm. So chunk it down. Maybe you spend 30 minutes a week even like if your schedule is kind of crazy or you're really tired because you're going through radiation or whatnot 30 minutes every week and just today i'm going to look through all my jeans next week i'm going to go through all my t-shirts mm -hmm. it doesn't have to happen overnight i always tell my clients it's, it's a marathon not a sprint so clean out your closet really is helpful because then you can see where are my holes so if i am getting rid of things and I make, when I'm helping a client clean out her closet, I make a list just like you would, let's say, you know, you're having everybody over th for Thanksgiving, you make your grocery list, do a shopping list. A shopping list helps you not feel so overwhelmed and you don't get persuaded by a well-meaning sales associate when you are out shopping. So I think the closet cleanse is vital. You know, um, I, I can identify with a lot of the things you said, just emotional attachment, or it's yeah. like kind of hard to let go of phases. Cause I still have my like pre baby jeans and just, yeah. you know, I just know yeah. I'm going to get back in them one day. And I have like 10 pair because I'm going to get back in you, I know. After, I know. you know, whatever, but um, right. it will be good to let that phase of life go and embrace the next stage so that you can be fully present in it. I, I like that you, you said it that way. That touched me yeah. because. I Good. really want to get in my pre-baby jeans. I you know, know, I know. And, and maybe you keep one pair that's kind of like, you're like, oh, this was this was a different stage of life. This was me then. But like you said, it's not you now. And it's hard because it also means kind of letting go of, of who you were then. And it, But you said it beautifully, embracing where you are now and who you are now. And it's amazing what I see my clients do when they start embracing the here and now and letting go of the past in that way. And I think it's just as women, we, it's just the way we are. I, I mean, I'm the same way. Um, <laughs> and also the thing, the things I tell my clients that are less, I guess, sentimental than you and I, I'm like, from a practicality standpoint, 
the jeans that you were wearing, you know, before you had children probably are not going to be in style by the time you want to wear them again. <laughs> you're, and you're probably going to want to treat yourself to a new pair. So, yeah. And, and it's hard. And so, you know, even for if, if that's just, you know, your regular thing and you throw breast cancer on top of that, right? Like if a woman, you know, was in her full era of like, this is who I am and all of the things. Yeah. And then now my breasts are gone and now my skin looks completely different and I don't know where to start. And so for those women um, yeah. who, okay, like I've cleansed the closet or I'm oh. in this space, um, yeah. what are some important things for them to kind of consider when trying to learn how to close themselves after having a mastectomy or having a radiation? Do you know if they're, I'm sorry, I'm asking, I feel like I'm asking like a thousand questions at the same time, but no, you, you know, if there are more materials that are just more forgiving on mm -hmm. those sensitive areas for them during that time, because that can be a barrier as well. Like I don't want to go out because then I have to get dressed and be uncomfortable mm -hmm. because right. of the way my skin feels or my scars yeah. feel. So, yeah. Right. That's, I think that's beyond important. And you hit the nail on the head of like, if you don't, if you don't feel confident in your clothes or in the way you are presenting yourself, you're not going to want to say yes to going to lunch with a friend or going to get coffee or whatever. And I think it's really, really important um, for we as women to, especially when we're going through something as, as challenging as breast cancer to find those little pieces that make you feel like yourself, that make you feel like normal. Right. And cause it's a, it's a mental game too. And so clothes and wearing things that you feel good in are a part of that. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, I have a client who has been dealing with leukemia and she's still like, you know, it, when she can, when she feels up to it, she's having a good phase right now. She'll put a little bit of makeup on. She'll put on an outfit that feels comfortable and she just feels like herself and doesn't feel like leukemia. So I think that it, it's amazing how it is a mental game. But like you said, you got to have things that feel good and are comfortable to you. So I think, so I'll, I'll kind of give you some examples since, um, from, from my real clients. So for example, one client, um, she had a double mastectomy and did not have reconstruction surgery. And that has been, um, and that was, and that was a great choice for her. That's what she needed to do, but it's, it has made it more challenging from a clothing perspective because clothes just don't fit as well sometimes because she has prosthetic breast. And so what we have to really make sure we, we, uh, focus on are fabrics with stretch. So what I've, and this is true, I think for anyone that's had a big bust, stretch is typically your friend so that it, you know, fits over the girls. Mm -hmm. So for her, we've really had to focus on um, fabrics that have some give to them. So if it's a cotton, it can't be like just a stiff cotton. Denim, same thing. Like anything stretch is really important. So don't get frustrated and beat up on yourself because it's not you. You just need to focus on stretch fabrics. But when I say stretch fabrics, it doesn't mean like lycra clingy because that's also not going to, that's also not something we do because one, it's not going to be very comfortable, but two, she's, because she has prosthetics, a little bit more self-conscious about them not looking like her breast. Natural. Yeah. Her natural breast. And so, I, but I also don't want her wearing a big old box because she's still beautiful and she still has a great shape, but she doesn't want to wear a, a big moo moo. So I think that's where you have to find that happy medium between hiding behind your clothes, which I think is a probably very natural um, instincts when you're going through something like this and, and things that are too clingy. So this is what I call drape. Good drape in a fabric is everything. So what does good drape mean? It just means that it's a more substantial fabric, but it has like some stretch and some movement to it versus like think of like a poplin cotton that does not have good drape so we probably wouldn't want to do anything that's really boxy like that um the other thing that she and i have really focused on was um this is true actually for two of my clients that are that are breast cancer survivors they found that necklines really changed for them once they had the other client had reconstruction surgery and she found that necklines changed a lot. So we did have to end up getting her a lot of new tops and, and some tops we could just have, you know, taken up in the shoulders, but it did change. And part of that was she opted for a smaller breast 
when she had reconstruction surgery. So you have to kind of think through that, of course, with your journey. But it did when you, when she had smaller breasts, it did change the way her clothes fit. So she had to size down in tops. We also had a, this, you know, when you do sleeveless this area, we had to focus on things that had a higher armhole so that um, you couldn't see like where one of her scars was there. So you just kind of have to think through like, what are the things that I don't want shown? And like you said, if someone had, had radiation and maybe they've got their skin just doesn't feel like um, it's, you know, yourself right here, opt for something with like a higher neck. Thankfully, we're entering fall winter. So we're going to have lots of great higher necks and funnel necks are really in and all that kind of good stuff. But you want to think through like, what are the areas that I'm just not comfortable showing right now? And, and make that a priority for yourself. But I think the biggest thing is fabric, like you said, comfortable stretch, but not clingy. Um, and I know it's easier said than done to go find these magical things. So at the end, I'm happy to answer any questions of where to look for things like that, if, if y'all have them. Yeah, so no body con stuff. Yeah, no know? body con. No Rue 21 stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Probably not that, not the body con era. <laughs> yeah, you know, not forever 21, all the things that, you know, yeah. was the rave, you know, if you, well, I guess 10 years ago now. Right, but, right. But that's really good to know. And that's not um, something that people often think about either, you know. Um, when we think about reconstruction, we don't necessarily think about, well, are they going to be the same size? Because that, I mean, they're probably not going to be the exact same. Yeah. And so, um, making those adjustments too. Um, another question that I had too for individuals who do have prosthetics or if they do have, um, reconstruction or, or whatever, or if they're in that kind of loophole of getting those things done, what are some, um, ways that somebody could, um, find bras or prosthetics that are mm -hmm. functional and comfortable as they're making these adjustments to their wardrobe following, you know, in lieu of their treatment. Yes, absolutely. I think that has been one of the most challenging pieces of the puzzle for my, my client that had double mastectomy and, and didn't have reconstruction surgery. That's probably been the hardest thing for her because, um, so they're obviously, thank, thank goodness, a wonderful resource in Birmingham is touching you and Hoover. And then obviously, Forge, y'all have a wonderful um, team member that does uh, help with prosthetics because I do, it's kind of like going in for a bra fitting. Like you, when you go in for a prosthetic fitting, like you, it's a very intimate experience, of course. And it's one of those things where you want to make sure you have a good conversation of this is what I'm comfortable with. These are the type of clothes I wear because the client that has the prosthetics said they're very heavy. And so sometimes it does feel like it can kind of hurt her back. So you do want to make sure you are getting a supportive bra for the prosthetics and that you're not getting them too big. Of course, you want them, like we said, to fill out your clothing and to make you feel like yourself and feminine, but do keep them, that in mind because that's something that she's mentioned to me several times. And also, like I was saying with her, um, with her prosthetics, it was hard to find things that would fit across here we would oftentimes have to size up or like I said, find things with some good stretch to them. So do keep that in mind when you're having that conversation about getting your prosthetics, think through clothes because ultimately they're going to go under clothes. So you want them to work for you. Um, and the other thing that we, and granted, this is not, we're not going into bathing suit season, but Next summer, something for, for anybody that has for sex to think about bathing suits. That's something that I've dealt with with this client is, okay, because she doesn't have a bust. So she's like, how do I fill out a bathing suit and not feel self-conscious? So I actually had found, I can't remember, it was on Amazon, honestly, like some waterproof kind of um, inserts and had my seamstress sew them into her bathing suit. And so I know, is that cool? Cause she wasn't going to wear her like real prosthetics, um, swimming and whatnot. I mean, maybe you, maybe you could depending on what kind you had. So that was really helpful because then she, she didn't have to worry about it popping out. They were, mm -hmm. they were in there. So, is so cool. Isn't that cool? So there are lots of creative solutions, <laughs> if you will, but it can feel, you know, I didn't want her to feel like she couldn't go to the beach with her friends. You know, I want, and, and so I want every single um, woman here listening today to feel like you can still live your best life. It's just these creative solutions make a big difference. 
thank you so much. I, I, I never would have thought of that. So, I mean, yeah. just really innovative thinking. Um, Got to, because you want to you be able to live your life. I mean, you're a breast cancer survivor. You want to be able to live your life. Yeah, you know, and, and one thing that I try to remind some of our clients um, is that, you know, breast cancer is a part of your journey, but you are not, you know, mm -hmm. this is not where you stop. This is not where you end. And this is yeah. not to you. There's so much more to you because yeah. you were you before breast cancer and now you'll be a different yeah. you afterwards. Um, and so I know that we're, we're nearing kind of the, the end, but one thing I wanted to, to kind of ask, um, well, two things, I guess, what are some common things like misconceptions that someone might have when they're about to make these types of decisions on mm. I'm going through treatment or now I'm done with treatment and I need to find a new way to dress um, because of whatever reason? Mm -hmm. um, what are some misconceptions that you kind of want people to know about? And then also, um, what are some final thoughts you'd love to leave our viewers with as they kind of think mm -hmm. on, you know, what does dressing this new body look and feel like? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is something I asked my my clients that have been through breast cancer because I figured they would have some wonderful words of wisdom for, for y'all. I think something I heard from both of them was I think when you get, and I actually talked to Meg about this as well, because her sister's a breast cancer survivor. We talked about the fact that when you're going through a journey like this, you, you hit decision fatigue, right? Like you're just like, oh my gosh, I just want this to be over with. And so when you get to the piece of the puzzle of reconstruction surgery, if that's a part of your journey, it can be easy to just like, whatever. Like, and then that was kind of my client that opted not to have, after her double mastectomy, opted not to have reconstruction surgery. She was like, I just can't do another surgery. I'm so done with this, which is completely fair. Um, but, and then the other client that had just one breast reconstructed, um, both of them were like, I wish I had given it some more thought as far as what I wanted my, my journey to be like, as far as reconstruction, whether it be, you know, having them reconstructed, whether it be the, the cup size, whether it be one of my clients was, was saying that when she had her, um, her, her single breast reconstructed, that some of the fat from the breast tissue kind of went into um, her like lower armpit area. And that's been made it really frustrating for her with clothes because she didn't used to have that right there where her bra um, is. So I think it's just like having these often uncomfortable conversations with your doctor or with your significant other or your best friend or whomever to be like, what do I want that to look like for me? What is going to make me feel good long-term after all this is said and done? Because it does make a difference in how you feel about yourself, about your clothes. So, so that's, that's just something I wanted to share when I asked both my clients, like what's something you really want to make sure that these women know that's something they shared with me. Um, but then as far as just from a clothing perspective, I think the biggest thing is don't get discouraged that, like I said, curating a wardrobe, rebuilding a wardrobe, if your body has changed during this journey does take time. Like I said, you're going to remember this. It's a marathon, not a sprint, because it really is not going to happen overnight. I think we are all in the phase where we just want things to happen and be done and quick fix, but clothing isn't necessarily that way because you're going to have some experimentation in this, you know, new stage of life and with your body different, you may try things and be like, well, this is not my friend and that's okay. Why is it not your friend? Why did this garment not work? Is it because, like I said, it was too stiff, too boxy? Is it because it, the armholes were too big? Let that be your guide. Also, I think a lot of times online shopping is such a great resource right now. If you're maybe not feeling comfortable going out into a store and being with help, being helped by a sales associate, you know, that use that to your advantage as well. So, um, but so I think that's the biggest thing is like, just don't get discouraged. Like think of, think of this journey and re curating your wardrobe as experimentation and, and, and a process. So, yeah. yeah. And, and then um, one thing you had mentioned earlier that I think would go well with that addition is to do it in parts. You don't have to do it all in a day. Yes. Because yes. as overachievers, we'll try and get on a whole new wardrobe in the same day. We'll try yes. to clean it up in a day, yes. give it away in a day. Yes. Um, it in parts will make it more manageable. A hundred percent. Beautifully put. Because 
also, I think it's really important to do in stages because of the experimentation piece. Like if you go out and buy a whole new wardrobe and spend all that money and all that time, and then you're like, oh, wait, I don't really even like this. Why did I buy all this? Or I don't even, this doesn't even go together. And then you're frustrated again because you're like, I've spent all this money. I spent all this time. This doesn't even work. So little by little, use that shopping list from your closet cleanse and chunk it down. Like what are, I always say like, have it in two categories. Like one category of your shopping list should be like, these are my basics. Like I got to have a new pair of jeans. I got to have a white t-shirt, whatever it might be. And then have like, I call them like your personality pack things. What are the things that are part of your style, your signature that are going to make you feel like you? So maybe it's like you love a pop of color. You love a great scarf. Scar uh, scarves are a great, um, like lightweight, like silky scarves are a great way to ease into um, your, you know, post-surgery journey too. Like if you feel like you don't want so much attention right there or you don't want too much to it, too much of your neck, a little silk scarf can be a beautiful way to add color to your face and to kind of conceal things as you're changing. So food for thought there too. Well, thank you so, so much. Um, I learned things. I think that this is something that's applicable, of course, through many different channels, but thank you for tailoring it to kind of discuss the things that breast cancer survivors um, experience. And so thank you for your time and, uh, and all of thank your you help. for having me. And thank you all for being here and carving out time um, out of your busy days. And I hope that this is inspiring. And yeah, and ask any and all questions because this is your time. And um, there are no silly questions. That's what I always tell people. That's how you learn. Indeed. Thank you so much.